the beginnings of Barclays Bank. Barclays Bank is one of the UK's oldest banks. It was established in 1690 and is currently one of the four major banks with the biggest market share of UK clients. The bank's origins can be traced back to two Quakers, John Freem and Thomas Gould, who worked as goldsmiths in the city of London. Goldsmiths worked as bankers at the time, making loans to enterprises and merchants. Hey guys, welcome to Startup Bits. In today's video, we'll discuss the history about Barclays Bank and how it is known to be one of the next banks in the UK. But before we begin, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Partners in the bank, like many other enterprises created at the time, were frequently chosen through planned marriages that would benefit the organization. When John Freem's daughter married John Barclay in 1728, he joined the bank and added his name to the title, which became the bank's sole name. Barclays was formed by the merger of several businesses. Barclays joined several other banks on London's Lombard Street and remained there until 2005 when it relocated to Cannery Wharf. It was the sixth largest bank in England at the time. It was listed on the stock exchange in 1902 and had changed its name to Barclays Bank Limited by 1917. By 1920, the Treasury had prohibited additional bank mergers, but this did not stop Barclays from developing and spreading its businesses to other regions of the world. Notable examples include the Caribbean, South Africa, and many sections of Europe. Barclays Eagle Symbol Barclays Eagle Emblem is fascinating. In the late 18th century, few people could read or write, so companies used signs to promote. Quakers found the Bible emblem at 54 Lombard Street unsuitable, therefore they chose the Black Spread Eagle. The bank wanted to keep its logo when given arms in the 1930s. Because it was used on so many royal arms, it had to be changed. Barclays added three crowns to the emblem, since two of their other Lombard Street sites had signage for the three kings and the three crowns. Barclays logo is a widely recognized symbol. UK domestic banking's rise. During World War II, more women worked in banks. In the 1950s, Barclays hired more women than men, which was unusual but well received. Better services attracted UK rivals and Barclays began large scale advertising. As Barclays Bank expanded, it bought Martins Bank, a regional firm, in 1968. Barclays bought the Woolrich Building Society PLC in 2000. Barclays Bank and Investment Banking Following the deregulation of the banking sector in the mid-1980s, the bank created its own investment banking, which grew and expanded until it became Barclays Capital. Barclays eventually purchased Lehman Brothers, which fell when the financial crisis hit in 2008. That, however, is the subject of another narrative. 2008 Financial Crisis Barclays' global ambitions were undaunted by the 2008 financial crisis. Barclays' personnel, including future CEO Bob Diamond, negotiated to buy pieces of bankrupt Lehman Brothers to enter the investment banking big league. Augur writes that Barclays could finally be a top five universal bank. Barclays believe the credit crisis will end in a few months and, unlike RBS and Lloyds, can't accept government financing. This wasn't due to a moral aversion to collecting public money, but because government members on Barclays' board didn't fit the bank's international goals. Barclays accepted more liquidity from the Bank of England, another governmental support. Why? This was a systemic failing. Barclays was keeping up with other banks, especially smaller ones that joined the US mortgage market and made enormous money. Traders got multi-million pound bonuses. Politicians and authorities praised light-touch regulation that made London the world's leading financial district. Non-executive board members were rotated in and out by headhunters who knew little about the bank's dangers. Few individuals understood what was happening, which let them dodge responsibility. Barclays announced a three-year collaboration with Oxford University's Sustainable Finance Group, OXSFG, and the UK Centre for Greening Finance and Investment on October 19th, CGFI. This groundbreaking project will address the urgent need for improved emissions data and the establishment of decarbonization pathways, allowing Barclays and other financial institutions to assist clients in the UK agriculture sector in lowering emissions and transitioning to more sustainable practices. Methods established through this collaboration will back Barclays' establishment of medium-term targets to reduce emissions resulting from agricultural financing activities, a critical component of the bank's commitment to align its financing with the goals and deadlines of the Paris Agreement. 
Barclays Bank UK PLC announced two additional non-executive appointments to its board of directors, effective October 17, 2022. Bernadette Whiteman joined as an independent non-executive director in September, and John Livers starts October 17, 2022. As Barclays UK continues to evolve and grow, it is critical that the board possesses the diversity of ideas and skill sets required to achieve success, said Crawford Gillies, chair of Barclays Bank UK PLC. Bernadette contributes knowledge of transformation, technology, and digital innovation to improve customer experience, whilst John brings financial regulation expertise. Their expertise and insights will complement and enrich the board's current skill base, assisting in the acceleration of Barclays UK strategic change. So this was all on the Barclays Bank and how it had a lot of setbacks, yet it established its name. Hope you enjoyed our video. If yes, then please hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you in the next one.